So when we come back with more of the story tonight, the Emmy Awards, apparently, according to the numbers, continued to turn off viewers last night with stuff like this. The only white people that think Jesus are Republicans and ex-crackheads. So. <laughs> there you go. So Kat Timp and Tom Shalou here with their take right after the break. TV's biggest night hitting an all-time low in the ratings. Last night's primetime Emmy Awards show losing more viewers than ever, perhaps thanks to jokes like this. The only white people that think Jesus are Republicans and ex-crackheads. So. Uh, <laughs> chuckle, chuckle. Here now, Tom Shalou and Kat Timp, both are Fox News contributors. Tom, what do you think? That was, you got to have the setup in there. The setup was, my mother doesn't watch this show. That his, is correct. His mother likes to see people thank Jesus. And right. he said a true thing. He said the only white people who thank Jesus are Republicans and ex-crackheads. And that's what he's saying. He's making, that's a joke making fun of liberal elitists, you yeah. see? So he it's did. not a bad joke. Cat. I completely agree. He was making fun of the liberal elitist Hollywood people I think you're who right. would not. I think you're right. And plus, he said ex-crackheads, not crackheads. <laughs> and I think that ex-crackheads are very strong, amazing people because I don't know a lot about crack, but I do know that it's very hard to quit. And I yeah. personally, like, I can't even quit French fries myself. <laughs> so I do not look down on ex-crackheads. I admire you all. Yes. yes. And his mom, I, I get it, right? His mom's like, nobody ever thinks Jesus on that show. Why should I watch it? He was poking um, fun of ag them. Agreed. Mm -hmm. So Sesame Street, the, the guy who's been writing the Burt and Ernie characters since 1984, but they've been around since like, I don't know, 1970 something when the show first came out. He now says that Burt and Ernie are gay, that he wrote them that way, that he always thought about his partner when he was writing the characters. But Sesame Street begs to differ. They say we, as we have always said, Bert and Ernie are best friends. They were created to teach preschoolers that people can be good friends with people who are very different from themselves, even though they are identified as male characters and possess many human traits and characteristics. They remain puppets. They do not have a sexual orientation. Huh? Wow. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> leave it to Sesame Street to come up with some common sense there. Frank Oz said the same thing. Yeah. He said, I created Bert. And of course not. They're just roommates. I knew, I, I'm from the Sesame Street generation, so I grew up with Bert and Ernie. But no, they're just roommates. And wh who's next? Waldorf and Statler? Uh, Gonzo? I mean, <laughs> who are they going to try to... I don't think you can just midstream as a writer suddenly take over the characters and decide that, that they're gay. Especially when, as someone from Sesame Street pointed out, they don't exist from the waist down, which... Right. That seems difficult. like it would be a pretty important thing. Although, <laughs> personally, I'm having a really hard time uh, caring whether or not they're gay because when it comes to real people I don't care whether or not they're gay live your last best life be you I don't care so if I don't care if real people are gay I'm finding a really hard time caring whether or not people who are like not people right. if they're gay or Getting not worked up over so I can't believe that this is their puppets I've spent approximately zero percent of my life thinking about puppet sex lives. <laughs> not to brag. I've got other stuff going on. Elf. You talking about Elf? I do think about Elf, Elf a lot, but not in a sexual <laughs> way, no. Okay. Well, you know, I, I grew up on Sesame Street, too. And I like to think of, you know, that the characters are puppets as well. They are puppets, after all. One of them lives in a garbage can. That's not easy, That's, right? Uh, you can't pull that off. Oscar the Grouch. Exactly, yeah. Oscar the Grouch. So, I, I, you know, I think... I it's think New York, too. It's the rents. The rents are very high in New York. <laughs> So they needed to split the money. That's why they were roommates. It's, I think was... they were like the odd couple. I always thought of them like the puppet version of the odd couple, Felix and Oscar. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe they were divorced gentlemen. I've yet to meet. <laughs> I've yet were. to meet an adult man without a roommate in this city. Actually, exactly. So, Cat, Tom, always good to see you. Thank you very much, you guys. Thanks. So that is our story on this Tuesday night. What do you think about that? Send me a tweet at Martha McCallum. We'll be back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Tucker Carlson is warming up, getting ready for his big show, which is coming up just about six seconds away. We'll see you tomorrow.